Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Perth Fortress this morning. It's great to see everyone here. It's great to see those in the room this morning. It's great to welcome those who are sharing with us online. We welcome you this morning. We hope that you enjoy sharing with us in this time of worship today. If those who are online would like to say hello to us, we don't always know that you're there. Your privacy settings will not always allow us to see that you've joined us. So if you would like to say hello, we welcome that this morning. Thank you so much. Uh, to let the songsters know that you do have a practice this morning after the meeting, so please don't run away too quickly. I'm sure that you'll enjoy that time. We have been asked by the family of Bernice Bennett to let you know that the funeral will be by invitation only, understanding that in these times in COVID and with the restrictions on numbers, uh, the family want to make sure that everything is managed well. So please don't just turn up to the funeral without the invitation. The family have been very intentional in that. And we thank you so much for your consideration and your prayerful support of the family at this time. This afternoon is Messy Church. It's an exciting time of the month for us. Uh, at 4.30 this afternoon, we'll start. We've got a craft. We've got activities. We've got a message. We've got dinner. I don't know what else you could ask for on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, so it's going to be a great time of sharing together. If you have family, friends, grandchildren, someone else's grandchildren with permission, bring them along. It's always good to share together, and we enjoy that time. It's a very simplified message, but it's a very deliberate message as well. So we do make it intentional about Christian, sharing in a Christian environment, so it's not just craft. So it's great to encourage people to join with us. And on the point of thinking of our kids and young people, just to let you know that today there are 11 kids starting junior soldiers classes. So that's an amazing growth, isn't it? When you look at churches that are diminishing in the Western world, and we're saying that we've got 11 kids. Yes, worth a round of applause, whoever started that. Thank you. So pray for our YP workers. Pray for the, the, the influence that they have over the kids and the example that they set and how we can all be that example as well within the church. Now, the men's fellowship, I think I slipped up last time we did the announcements and mixed the dates up. Just to be clear, the men's fellowship's on the Friday night, the 11th. So if you're coming along, all adult males are invited to come along for a curry. We're meeting here at the hall and we'll go from there at 6.30. Uh, so from 7 o'clock, apologies, 7 o'clock. And then following that on the Saturday night is our YP anniversary. 
There's lots of kids been practicing very hard. We have dinner arranged. There are desserts arranged. The dinner will be a grazing table on each individual table. So it's great sharing. I'm getting waves from the back. Hi, how are you? Good morning. That's great. Uh, so it'll be a great night of sharing together. Coffee booth will be on. There'll be fresh coffee. It's not, nothing coming from the urn this time. We're stepping it up a league again. So it'll be a great time of celebrating our kids. And then on Sunday morning, in our morning service, we'll be doing more of that. So I invite you to put those dates in your diary for the men on this Friday night and then for the core on the Saturday night celebrating the kids and then Sunday morning following that. There's lots more in the newsletter. Please see that for uh, all the finer detail of what's going on. And now this is the second Sunday that our officers are on furlough and we're very fortunate to have very capable leaders stepping up who weren't able, so Ken and Leanne stepped in. No, I am joking. Ken and Leanne, we're very grateful for what you're doing. Captains Ken and Leanne will be leading us this morning. And thank you so much for what we do. And I'm sure that you've been guided in what you're bringing to us this morning. So thank you. Leanne, I'll hand it with you now. Thank you. Good morning. It's always a privilege to come together, isn't it? To worship corporately. Our whole life, every day, everything that we do is an act of worship. But to come together as a church family, to, to share with each other the good things that have happened during the week and to share the struggles that we have. And so today we come, we quieten ourselves to come before God as an act of worship. And so as we do that, I don't know about you, but I'm sure for many of us lots of things have happened this morning before we've even walked in the door. And so now just to take that time to quieten ourselves before God, to prepare our minds and our hearts to hear from him this morning. What does he want to say to each of us individually this morning? What does he want to say to us corporately as a church? And so we're going to start off with a reading together, a responsive reading, um, just, to, just to get us in the frame of mind to worship. And so I will read uh, those bits and then there should be uh, some highlighted words if you can join together in that. Lord, help us say no when the voices speak of building up investments in the things of the world, when you want to, us to invest ourselves in the ways of heaven. Lord, help us say no to what the world tells us we need in the accumulation of stuff when you want us to let go the stuff and rely on you instead. Lord, help us say no to the quick fix and ready-made answer that patches the cracks when you long for us to take a lifetime to live and explore the questions. Lord, Help us say no to throwing money at every problem of feeding the hungry with direct debts, when you wish we would live in a more equal relationship with those who are hungry in the world. Lord, help us say no to the easy way the world wants, that involves no pain or hardship, when you call us to carry crosses and trust the love that bears all. Lord, help us say no to conflicts that show humanity at its worst in blitz and repression, when you know we can live ways that show the magnificence of humanity. Lord, help us say no to a faith that speaks empty words and is borne by hollow actions, when we know of a word that brings the fullness of life and is carried by actions shaped by justice. And so as we enter into worship this morning, maybe some, there is something that God is speaking to you about, something that you may need to say no to, and maybe there's something that God is wanting you to say yes to. It's a thought to ponder on as we enter into worship this morning. And so we're going to sing together. If you're able to and would like to stand, then do that. And we are going to praise, praise the Lord who does incredible and mighty things in our world and in, in amongst us. So stand if we can as we sing um, four verses. We'll sing straight through. <laughs>
Okay, now the first Bible reading for this morning is taken from Exodus 3, uh, 1 to 15. One day, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming in to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God, who am I? To appear before Pharaoh. Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, If I go to the people of Israel and tell them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, What is his name? Then what are then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. Good morning. We, like Moses, are now in the presence of our Lord. I want to invite you to stand as we sing together some beautiful choruses talking about being in God's presence talking about surely where we are here in Perth Fortress or at home online, God is with us each. And we're going to sing three songs together. They're going to sort of link in because they all beautifully line up. Surely the presence of the Lord is found in this place. And because of that, we are standing on holy ground. Surely it is in this place we're going to sing again. And we need to be still in that presence of God to hear what he has to say to us. And then surely we are in his presence. We look to him for what he would say to us personally to share in our lives with others. Let's sing together. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. As I walk 
I sense sing His presence. And I knew this was the place where love abides. For this is a temple, Jehovah God abiding. We are standing in His presence on holy
join together in prayer and then after that our th- opportunity will be given to bring your tithes and offerings to our Lord this morning. Please join me in prayer. We are blessed to be in your presence, O Heavenly Father. We thank you that wherever we find ourselves, that you are in the midst. So often, Lord, we take for granted the fact we are doing things and we're not with you because we're just doing our job. But we know, Lord, that you are with us in everything we do. You should be at our forefront of our thoughts and minds. And so we apologise and we ask your forgiveness for the times we don't think about you. Lord, at this very time now, we would ask that you would be with us and we would be very much aware of your presence. We would be listening to what you would have to say to us each individually. We thank you for the messages that we are going to receive and we pray your blessing upon your speaker because we know, Heavenly Father, that you have a message to share with us each individually today and you will use Ken and Leanne in that space. We pray for our blessing upon our officers as they have a a time of rest and we ask that you would refresh them as they continue to minister in this place. We pray for those who are in the eastern states who don't have the, the joy of coming together in this way. Lord, bless them in their homes. Bless them in their families. And Lord, we hand all our concerns, every need that we have, over to you knowing that you are the great healer you are in control thank you heavenly father amen
we're just getting ready for our kids' spot. So if I can get the kids to actually come up as close as you can uh, to the front today. I'm doing cooking, so I'd love you to come up the front. For those of you at home, this is a little heads up that you might like to get some brownies ready in your day today to be able to experience what we're doing this morning. Wherever you like. All right. Can you guys see from there? I've got the, um, the things over this side, so as long as you can see. All right. Who likes brownies? There's lots of hands up. Who likes brownies, congregation? <laughs> People at home, do you like brownies? We're going to make some today. All right, so I need not that great a baker, so I'm going to go with a packet mix. Is that okay? <laughs> Feed brownie packet mix. We need to put all of the mix in to my, to my bowl here. Sorry, camera guys, I'm going to be backwards and forwards. Then it says that I need eggs and oil. All right. I am going to do this, so bear with me. Two eggs. Just to show you this is real. All right. One more. I didn't get any shell in. One more. All right. So we've got... We've got the brownie mix. We've got a little bit of egg. We don't have lots and lots of eggs, just a little bit. We're also going to put in just a little bit of oil. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. That'll do. All right. And I have a tip from Auntie Lynn, who break, bakes the best brownies, that if we add real chopped chips, even though it's not in the box, it'll taste delicious. So let's add just a little bit. Chopped chips. The band are telling me the whole packet, but if you've heard the key word a little bit, <laughs> you would see the theme that's going on so far. All right, shall I give it a mix? Actually, you know what? I'm going to add one more ingredient. Um, some cat food, okay? Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit will be all right, won't it? Everyone's yelling out no. Just a little bit at home, shall I add? It's good quality. It's whiskers. All right, so sin. I'm going to talk about sin. Sin is just like this cat food. Sometimes you think it's okay if we just add a little, if there's just a little bit of sin, you know, maybe it's a small thing like you didn't tell the truth when your mum asked you if you cleaned your room. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's just a little bit of sin like thinking, like thinking badly about someone. But a lot of the time, we think it's just those little sins that are, they're okay, we can just do them. It's only the big sins like stealing or hurting someone that actually hurts us or separates us from God. But sin is like this cat food. Even a little bit of it isn't good for your life and can really mess things up. Just like if I added a little bit of cat food to our brownies. So in two weeks' time, when we have our kids and youth bringing their presentations at YP Anniversary, they're going to remind you that, yes, we all sin. But graciously, God gave us a guide and a saviour in our lives and th for our sinfulness, and that's Jesus. <laughs> that's Jesus. <laughs> Throughout all the darkness and sinfulness of this world, we have Christ as our lighthouse, and as our guide to direct our lives, even through the sinfulness. But because Jesus conquered this world and died for our sins, 
He wants us to try really to not sin and to not let sin keep us away from him, not even a little bit of sin. Kids, we're going to go out to kids' church now. Good luck with making the brownies at home, everyone. Scripture reading this morning is taken from Romans 12, reading verses 9 through to 21, and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another, and never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. Despise evil and embrace everything that is good and virtuous. Be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as members of one family. Try to outdo yourselves in respect and honour of one another. Be enthusiastic to serve the Lord, keeping your passion toward him boiling hot. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit and let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. Let this hope burst forth within you, releasing a continual joy. Don't give up in a time of trouble but commune with God at all times. Take a constant interest in the needs of God's beloved people and respond to by helping them and eagerly welcome people as guests into your home. Speak blessing, not cursing, over those who reject and persecute you. Celebrate with those who celebrate and weep with those who grieve. Live happily together in a spirit of harmony and be as mindful of another's worth as you are your own. Don't live with a lofty mindset, thinking you are too important to serve others, but be willing to do many your tasks and identify with those who are humble-minded. Don't be smug or even think for a moment that you know it all. Never hold a grudge or try to get even but plan your life around the noblest way to benefit others. Do your best to live as everybody's friend. Beloved, don't be obsessed with taking revenge, but leave that to God's righteous justice. For the scriptures say, if you take justice in your own hands, I will release justice for you, says the Lord. And if your enemy is hungry, buy him lunch. Win him over with kindness for your surprising generosity will awaken his conscience and God will reward you with favour. Never let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with good. Amen.
I don't know whether you've had the sense of the, um, the message coming through in the meeting this morning, but this morning we want it to be the focus on something that is about us. And the words of the, the message that the band just brought us, this is God's moment for you. Not a moment for somebody else, not a moment for those people out there, but the moment for us this morning. And I've got a question for you because of that. And the question that I'd ask us each to reflect on today is exactly, who am I? And I mean that in the true sense. When we peel back all the layers and the masks and everything else that happens for us and the things that we might do, if we stop and look at ourselves and we're fair income and we actually say, who am I? What does that reveal for you? In one of the numerous series of videos, Rob Bell talks about this occasion when he's gone off to, um, to see a counsellor. And he's talking with his counsellor and during the session with his counsellor, he's obviously uh, sharing things that are happening in his life. And then he says to this counsellor, is it normal for people to... And the counsellor stops him. And the counsellor says to him, is it normal for who? And he stops for a moment and then he starts again and he says, well, is it normal for people to stop? We're not here to talk about other people today. We're here to talk about you. And this morning, as we think about what the message is today, I want us to make sure that we're thinking about it for what it is that God is wanting to say to me. Not sitting there thinking about, this is a great message for that bloke over there, or that'd be a fantastic message for the people out on the street out there. I'm wanting us to stop and think about, what is it that God is trying to say to me this morning? You know, whatever our circumstances are in life, we all have different filters and different lenses through how we process things, and that affects how we might interpret things at times, it affects how we might understand things, and that is part of reality. So one of the things that that sometimes means is that we can get into a place where we actually think that someone else has got it wrong. But I want to suggest to you it's not always about someone else having it wrong. It's about what are we doing about our understanding of how things are and what that should actually be like. And I think back to some of the real core elements of who we are and what we do, and, and I guess I even go back to real basic things, like things like our values. As the Salvation Army, what are the values of the Salvation Army? Integrity, compassion, respect, diversity, uh, collaboration, all those things that sit into our values. But you know, even when we start talking about our values, we have conflict about what we actually think that means. And is that because there's inherently something wrong with us? I don't think it is. It's because we are different in Christ. But we need to keep growing in him and growing in that relationship so we can understand, we can stop and listen, and we can actually not only learn and be part of, obviously, from God and the relationship that grows from him, but one of the challenges of listening is twofold. There's the listening opportunity that says to us, if I stop and listen to that person, it's actually really important because in listening to that person, they actually get a sense that they're being heard. And how empowering is that when people feel like they're being heard? I mean, we're not very far out of the back of National Homelessness Week. And I mean, one of the really clear messages that comes through very often from homeless people is very much the conversation that says, you know what, when someone stops and talks to me on the street, I actually feel like I'm not invisible anymore. I actually feel like I'm a person. I matter and someone's actually taking time to invest in me. The other part is, when we listen, and I'm talking now about listening, I'm not talking about going through the motions, sitting there, planning the rest of my day or doing anything else, I'm talking about genuinely listening. When we stop and we listen to people, we actually learn too. And we learn and we grow because those things are happening for us. What are some of the filters, perhaps, that we might have in how we live our lives today that might affect the things that happen? And I want to say one of the challenges I think at the moment in our, our society is the whole concept of individualism. Now, there, there's a really strong movement that says the most important person, the thing that matters, central to everything, is me. And if I can look after myself, the world's going to be great. You just all get on board and do it my way. And if you do it my way, life's going to be so much better. And it's not just a societal thing. It happens in the church. 
We have these expectations at times that people are going to come through that door and they're going to fit the cookie cutter mould and they're going to behave and act and do exactly what we expect of them because we think that's how it should be. God doesn't expect that. God wants us to come to him as we are. Enter our fellowship and be part of what's there and then it's the opportunity to learn and grow with each other and in God in those things that are happening. It's really important that we don't get caught up in the stuff that's about my values and my beliefs and things like that if we're going to use that in a position to try and compromise somebody else. Particularly this morning, I I, I chose to use for the scripture reading the Passion Translation and it was quite intentional because in some ways the scripture reading we used this morning is a fairly well-known reading to us. And there's a risk sometimes that when we hear a scripture reading, we think, oh, I know this one, I've heard it before. And do we really sometimes pay attention to what the message is? The Passion Translation this morning actually uses quite different language that I suspect for some people is a bit like, geez, that's not the scripture reading I was expecting. But the reality is when we pick that different scripture reading, we pick that because it actually might help us to just stop and look at it in a different lens today. Part of that stuff about listening is not just the stuff about our mouth, but sometimes it's the listening with our mind. So today, with a different scripture reading, I'm hoping that perhaps in that, God might have revealed something different to you. Same scripture, but in a different context, and there might have been something else that might have been teased out in that for you today. So in that scripture reading at Romans chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, it says, Let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another and never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. Despise evil and embrace everything that is good and virtuous. Be devoted to tenderly loving your fellow believers as members of one family. Try to outdo yourself in respect and honour of one another. I wonder if we can... Like, we can read that, and that's, that's pretty simple to read in some ways, but if we want to live that, that's really tough. It's really tough, and it actually causes us to stop and think not only where am I going but uh, um, is my relationship with God strong enough that he's going to carry me through this and I'll keep growing in that space as well. Only in these past weeks we've had Junior Soldier Renewal Sunday and in the coming couple of weeks, a fortnight away I think, we have Kids Celebration Weekend and I'm sure for all of us in terms of the church we want the best for our kids don't we? We want the kids to grow not only in a a healthy physical and emotional sense, we want them to grow really strong and spiritually in God. But one of the challenges is about keeping that tension between the individualism and also the belonging to the family of God. Because I'm certainly not saying that we all need to be cookie-cutter Christians and we're all going to look exactly the same and believe the same things. In fact, I'm actually saying exactly the opposite to that. What I'm saying to you is the church should be a safe place. It should be a place where I can come in and I can say quite openly in the the congregation of our church, I can say, well, I actually think that this is what God's saying to me. And it can be a safe place where people can actually engage in those conversations. They can talk, they can grow, they can be challenged and God can speak into it. Instead of us thinking we know all about it, God can speak into that space and help us all to grow. That's the place I want for my kids. Somewhere where they don't want to come somewhere where they're thinking, I'd better not say that because that's not the sort of stuff that we're allowed to talk about at church. I want them to be able to come in where they can do exactly that. You know, I want that for us. I want church to be a fair income place where I can rock up and if I want to say something, I can actually say it and if we've got a different opinion, we can talk about it and we can work our way through that and say, what is God saying to me in that place? That feeds into one of the other values, I guess, and some of these values, I guess we can say, are positive and some can be negative in some ways, but the other challenge for us in terms of what one of these filters might be for us is the sense of what is genuine Christian community? We can come along, we can sit here on a Sunday, we can be pleasant to one another and we can interact, but what is genuine Christian community? Paul talks about it in the scripture and he talks about ecclesia, So he talks about the community of Ecclesia and Ecclesia is about being called out from or being set apart from. So we've fitted in incredibly well in terms of what Lauren was sharing but that thing about where we think maybe if I just let this one little thing slip in there 
No one's going to really notice. But all of a sudden, that one little thing slips in and then another two or three and another four or five, and all of a sudden, I'm off on a completely different direction. And part of this genuine Christian community isn't just about a place to come and belong, because that's what it should be. It should be a place where we can come and belong. But it's got to be a place that when I come, I can be challenged too. And I can be challenged in an appropriate way, in a way that's about the love of God and not about judgment. It's the way of coming alongside someone and saying, hey, mate, I really love you, but you're so far off beam on this one. That's not what God's talking to me about. Can we have a chat about this? Instead of just wanting to beat someone around the head and say, no, you've got it all wrong and this is the way and there's no other question about it. Because that does so, many da- so much damage to so many people sometimes if we want to take a stance that doesn't say, let's bring God into the conversation, but instead, let's worship and live in the gospel according to Ken. And if it's the gospel according to Ken, it's so flawed it really doesn't matter. It stands for nothing. Because our source has got to be the truth and the truth has got to be God. One of the other... Um, One of the other filters perhaps for us is the filter of consumerism. We also live in a world where we think if we can get out there and we can get the next best thing, the the most up-to-date technology, the thing that's going to make me feel so much better about myself, pretty closely linked into some of the individualism stuff, that that's the stuff that really matters. And sometimes when we're doing that, we don't stop and think what the impacts are on other people of that behaviour of what we're doing. So again, going back to the the Passion Translation and looking at Romans at the verse 15 uh, 15 to 17, what the scripture said to us was, celebrate with those who celebrate. Weep with those who weep. Live happily together in a spirit of harmony and be as mindful of another's worth as you are of your own. Don't live with a a lofty mindset thinking you are too important to serve others, but be willing to do menial tasks and identify with those who are humble-minded. Don't be smug or even for a moment think that you know it all. Never hold a grudge or try to get even, but plan your life around the noblest way to benefit others. If I'm not living in a context that is about having the focus on me, I'm wanting more and I'm going to get that more at any cost then that's always going to be a risk of hurting other people because we're not focusing on the things that are important that God is trying to teach us in how we value and we grow in a Christian community. I guess another element that comes into it at the moment in terms of one of the filters that's, I think, both at a local level and on a global level at the moment, with everything that we're encountering across the world, is certainly one of the real filters for us at the moment is a filter of fear. There's uncertainty in the world, there's uncertainty often in a lot of our own personal lives for different reasons and things like that and that fear colours where we're going and we're really concerned and because we're concerned sometimes we think we've got to work really hard and we've got to find out solutions for things, work our way through it ourselves and if I work really hard on this and I concentrate, I'll work it out and we forget to bring God into it and when we forget to bring God into it, the fear takes us over. And we just don't see a solution at the end. And in First Peter, verse, uh, verse 7 of chapter 5, it says to us, Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. But often, and certainly my experience personally, is once it gets really bad, then sometimes I say, OK, God, I've really mucked it up. Now, do you want to come into this conversation with me? And let's see if we can try and recover where we're at. We shouldn't be living in that recovery sort of context. We should be living in that context where we're in strong relationship and we're including God in the things that we're doing and how we're living so that we're not crashing and burning, if you like, at the end of it all because all of a sudden we're in the wreckage and we're saying, hey, God, come and rescue me because I'm really in trouble now because God wants to be with us through that whole journey all the way through in everything that we're doing. The other opportunity for us and the other filter comes back to how in tune we are, how spiritually attuned are we to the things that are going on around us. Sometimes we get caught up on the peripheral things that frankly probably don't matter. You know, and and sometimes we might come into a setting where we want to think, 
The most important thing today is that one of the bandsmen wore the wrong colour socks and, geez, that was absolutely hopeless. How could a bandsman turn up today with the wrong colour socks on? And all of a sudden, there's no focus on worship at all. No focus on worship at all because we spend the whole day just ruminating on that and we let that take control of what we're about instead of bringing ourselves along and saying, God, I'm here, it's me, I need to hear from you this morning and I need to grow in you. So it's the little stuff like that that we're not attuned to what God's saying to us or what's, what's going on in that space. We're busy wanting to be picky and judgmental and those sort of things don't really do us a lot of good. It's interesting that in Exodus chapter 3, the verses 7 to 10, it clearly talks about through, through the, the reading there, and I'm not going to read that part of the reading, but it talks there very much about God knows what Moses has been through. It's not just, hey, Moses, you've been living a life over there and, geez, I guess maybe it's been a bit tough, but you know, I've been a bit busy, had other stuff on, haven't really noticed, but I hope you're doing okay. God knows exactly what's going on for all of us in every situation, wherever we are. And whilst sometimes we might struggle to actually understand that and realise that, or sometimes we do, but we still don't want to let it go anyway, um, but God is there, he's there in the things that impact our lives, the things that impact our family, the things that impact our church. He doesn't only know what's going on, he's there with us amongst it. And if we choose to, he'll be with us in that. Well, he'll be with us in that anyway. But if we choose to, he will actually carry us through those circumstances. You know, in the reading that we had when Moses saw the burning bush, his automatic reaction was, I'm going to start heading for the bush. Uh, Heading straight in, man, that looks really strange. I wonder what's going on there. I'm going to go over and I'm going to go out and have a look. And when he started walking over there, God spoke to him. And he spoke to him by name. It wasn't, hey you, hey bloke, stop, whatever. Moses, he spoke to him by name. Because he knew his name. And he knows each of our names. He knows who we are. We know, he knows the circumstances we're in. And he's not just going to talk to us like some other person that happens to be coming his way. He's going to stop and he's going to know exactly what's going on. So God knows and he loves us. No matter what's happening, he's going to be with us in the things that are happening. So in verse 5, God spoke to Moses and he said, don't come any closer, take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. You know, this concept of holy ground sometimes is we think we've got to be in a certain place at a certain time, in a certain set of situations or circumstances where we think that that's the holy ground and that's the place where if I want God to break through to me, I need to be. But you know, the place that is the holy ground is the place where we open ourselves up to God and we allow God to interact completely with us and share with us the things that are going on. It doesn't matter where we are, doesn't matter who we are, what our life circumstances have been, where we're going, what's happening in our mind at the moment. God already knows. He knows about what's happening, where we're going and what's going on for us. But we can meet with him and at that point of meeting with him is the point where that's holy ground. I'm wondering this morning, who are you? Who are you really? Fair dinkum, peel it all back. Who are you? Not just the person you want everything to think, everyone to think you are. And not not questions we need to share with other people. It's just something for us to reflect on and to work hard on with God this morning. It's really important for us. In just a moment, we're going to sing a a lovely song. And the the words of the song say, just let me, uh, sorry, just let me say how much I love you. And and in the reading this week, the the reading from Psalms was about proclamation and it was about praise. And really, this is a song that is about proclaiming and praising God in many ways because we're saying, hey God, I really love you. And why do I love you? I love you because you first loved me. And that's really important for where, where we should be. But again, There's questions that come out of some of this, and I haven't pulled it apart a long way, but there's a a couple of questions from a few lines in this that I think it's helpful for us to think about this morning. Just let me hear your finest whispers as you gently call my name. 
Who am I? Can I hear the voice of God this morning? Can I actually hear him whispering to me? Or am I so caught up in all the other rubbish and the other stuff that's going on in my life that I not only can't hear the voice of God, I absolutely can't hear the whisper of God because I'm too caught up in some of those other things that might be happening. Not because they're wrong things necessarily of themselves, but if they're separating us from God, what are we doing about it? And then it goes on a little bit further in that song and it says, And I am found completely surrendered to you, my Lord and friend. Complete surrender. Handing it all over to God. Not holding stuff back. Hey God, I really want to work with this stuff and it's really important. But geez, there's some really bad stuff I've done along the way there that I don't want you to know anything about. Because really, I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed. But it doesn't matter because you already know us. And we can't be embarrassed and ashamed of it from God. We might not want everyone to know about it, but God knows. So the question needs to be, who am I? Am I found completely surrendered? The words there say completely surrendered. It doesn't just say, oh, have you given a little bit of that tough stuff to God? Am I found completely surrendered? And then the last, the last piece that I want to, the last uh, sentence that I want to pull out particularly is the sentence that then says, and the depth of grace, the forgiveness found to be called a child of God. Who am I? Do I know that grace? Are there things that I need to repent so that I can repent and know that forgiveness and move on in my relationship with God this morning? There's lots and lots of words that we can pull out. More importantly, if we're asking ourselves the question of who am I, what is God saying to you this morning? Because my words don't matter. They really don't matter at all. But what is God saying to you this morning? What does he want to reveal in your life? How does he want to help you grow? There's an opportunity, as there always is, for people to come forward and pray if they wish. And and certainly with um, with the audio feed and everything else, We will be discreet so there won't be anything broadcast along those lines. People can pray where they are. People can come and speak to people afterwards and pray. But please don't be in a situation where we think, oh well, the meeting's over and I should be okay till next week. I'll follow on through. If God's speaking to you today, don't turn your back on that. Because the way we're going to the way we're going to grow and prosper in terms of our relationship with Him is by being open and being aware and locked in so that we're locked in track with what's happening for God with God let's sing this song together just let me say
Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you because at the end of the day, you are our God. And Lord, we're your people. And Lord, we pray that as this morning we've just stopped and thought a little bit about who we are, that Lord, you'll help us work through those issues. And Lord, where it needs to be, I ask that you challenge us really hard, Lord, to make us work through that and help us to come back to you to find what it is that you want to say to us today and in the days ahead. Lord, we love you. But we know in loving you that so often we fail you. And for so many reasons, that's because of the other things that come with living, living in the world that we live in, Lord. And sometimes it's just so easy to fall into step with those things that happen. Lord, I pray for us personally and as, for, as, as a church that you will help us to be an ecclesia community where we are set aside for you, but we're also engaging and we want to be with each other and bring each other to you and, and grow together so that we can be stronger in our relationship with you and continue to minister to the community and the people that we come across in the various activities of our week. Lord, bless us now as we continue in worship, I pray. Be with us, challenge us and uphold us. I ask in your name. Amen. Thank you. We're going to finish with a final song. And for the final song, we're going to sing, Send the Fire. Though God of burning, cleansing flames, send the fire. And I want to suggest to you that where we can, it would be a good song to be standing for because it's not one that really, if we're going to talk about God coming along and invigorating us, but when we're talking about transformation and we're talking about a revival in the church, the revival starts with us. And so until we're in that space, when we're talking about send the fire again, we're not talking about, hey, send the fire to those people out there that haven't got it, God. We're talking about, God, send the fire to us. Get us in tune with you. Make sure we're on top of what's going on so we can go out there and we can be in the community and we can be used by God. Send the fire. If you'd like to stand where you can, please, that'd be lovely.
like to share a benediction with you. It's the fourfold Benedictine blessing that I use regularly and I think you all know that I love it, but I love it because there's a message here that's for all of us as we leave this place. May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships so that you may seek truth boldly and love deep within your heart. May God bless you with holy anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people so that you may tirelessly work for justice, freedom and peace among all people. May God bless you with the gift of tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation or the loss of all that they cherish so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and transform their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in this world so that you are able, with God's grace, to do what other people claim simply can't be done. And the blessing of God, the supreme majesty and our creator, Jesus Christ, the incarnate word, who is our brother and saviour, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate and our guide, be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you.